so you know you travel the world now you do yeah, a whole yeah. lot of things and that's that's due to business a type of business mm-hmm. sales but tell me your success that we see now right yeah, yeah. What, what would you attribute that to what are two three things you would attribute that to well um it was the sacrifice i made at the beginning of my career to get to where I'm at now. A lot of people want to get to where I'm at without the first part. Right. Like I spent my first uh, 14 years living in hotels, uh, traveling around the country, six months of the year, six days a week, knocking doors for eight hours. Like literally that's all I did. Like my How people, many years? F- uh, 14 years hard. Wow. So basically th- think of it like from for, from preschool, like kindergarten, all the way till two years in college, I spent that time knocking doors. Wow. And so like at a very high level, um, tons of sacrifice, managed teams, recruited recruited businesses, or recruited uh, offices, uh, became a regional, became a vice president of company. Wow. So it's like all from doing that over and over and over again, sacrificing parties, sacrificing a lot of stuff. Yep to get there. And so basically now I'm at a point where something shifted. Well, number one, it was a solar industry yeah. where I could put in the same amount of effort and get 10 times the results yep. and not be as stressed. And then I could start living life a little more. So, nice. you know, that was, uh, that's what it was. So I really put in that time on the doors and had a phenomenal career, was always the top 1% of the industry. So, you know, it was uh, just something that I got to it and stuck to it. And so. So you got started at what age in door to door sales? 18. 18. Mm-hmm. Right I did out of too. High school. Nice. Yeah. I didn't do it as long as you did, but uh, at 18, I got started. We I forgot the name of the company, but we were selling those uh, pizza coupons. Buy yeah, one, yeah, get one free. Yeah. You get a free large pizza automatically. Yeah. Here in LA, we were selling the Dodger tickets. Buy one, get one free. Or, yeah, you know, sick. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And we made $10 a pop that we sold. So imagine, I, yeah. I was talking to you off camera. I wish it was like home security systems that I would have got introduced yep. to first. I would have made so much money, especially yeah. back then, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I remember we were doing security, and you were getting three hundred or two hundred and seventy-five bucks a pop, and uh, you know you want to sell hundred in the summer, and basically you make you know twenty, thirty thousand in the summer, and you're set. So that was uh, my goal. I went out and did it my first summer, made eighteen grand, and then uh, next summer I went out. Uh, made seventy thousand. Third summer went out, did one hundred and ten. Wow! And then fourth summer made like three fifty, and that's when like stuff started to click, and then just took off from the races from there. So it took me it took me a couple of years to figure it out. He, what's interesting is this. See, like my wife and I, we also still sell home security. Our main business is solar, but we still sell mm-hmm. home security. So to me, I found it very interesting that some of these companies, like you mentioned, they mm-hmm. only did the summer deal, yeah. which was weird because a lot of these companies that, I, at least what I know in the home in the home security world, just like like uh, solar, mm-hmm. we're year round. Yeah. So so what was the philosophy behind just go ham for three months? Yeah. And so it was uh, basically an RM job. So uh, BYU Utah Provo basically had uh, a summer break from April eighteenth to Mm -hmm. August 20th to August 30th. So back in the late 90s, early 2000s, all these pest control companies would recruit from BYU return missionaries Uh and get them to go do a summer program, whereas they would go out and work four months out of the year to make a year's long income. So what they did was is they set up their programs to be just like a Mormon mission. And so what they would do is, is they'd have the meetings every day, they'd go out, canvas, come back, and these guys just got off of a two-year mission, right? And then they would come back and do the same thing. So yeah. it was an easy transition for that. And so I got um, linked up with a group that ran that business model, and those are the ones that really innovated the door-to-door space, the Vivens. Yes. So Vivin is like the godfather that started all this, Todd Peterson. And so basically, uh, he revolutionized the the summer program and basically now all the big solar companies have all been lineages from Vivint and you know have been huge to pay homage to that group and so I learned directly from them for years and that's how I got good I you know I I, uh, you know learned business I learned how to sell be motivated all from the RM style job. It's an RM return missionary program. Wow. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. So I'd be in offices just with all uh, LDS members, and you know, you say one bad word, they yell at you. And so drink coffee. Yeah, drink no no coffee. There's I no coffee, coffee for there. closers there. No, dude. There's no <laughs> coffee for closers. So all right, right. Yeah, it was so strict. And so wow. Yeah, they uh, they turned my act around, bro. They got my life in order, and 
you know, uh, very thankful to learn from that model. Yeah. And now I've taken it, made some adjustments and found out how to make it sustainable. And that's what I teach now. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's been sick. It's interesting. You mentioned that a uh, couple things, a couple things that come to my mind when you mentioned that I was listening to a clip of Joe Rogan and he mentioned how, you know, religious, very religious fighters, fighters mm -hmm. that are very religious, like like he he's particularly talking about some of the Muslims, right? He yeah, was yeah, referring yeah. to some of the Muslims because you know they're also some of them are very you know. He says they're some of the scariest people in the world because they don't have all of these distractions. They're not out there chasing women, right? Yeah, yeah. Fighters are these young guys, right? In their twenties and thirties, mm -hmm. right? Early to mid thirties, and but if they're very religious, they're not doing. They're not smoking. They're not drinking. They're not partying. Not chasing girls, etc. He says, and all they got time for is to do their work, which is train. Yep. In your case, you're talking about what do they got time for? They got time to work. And I, it makes sense that some of the best door knocking companies, yeah. sales companies came out of Utah because they send their, 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 their you know, boys to missions for what, yeah. two years? Two years. Yeah. Travel so, to a different part of the world. So you imagine it. they learn a new language too in a couple yeah, of months yeah, yeah. and nice, they send dude. them to another part of the world and mm -hmm. all they do when they go on missions what do they do six days a week so, uh, seven I think it's seven days six or seven days a week yeah. wow it's nuts dude yeah, yeah they're very very committed and they turn people around like crazy man like because yeah. if you can do a Mormon mission you can do anything in life oh, and yeah. that's that's like that's really really hard stuff so it's oh heck yeah. yeah so it makes sense that those guys knock it out the park because I would think that when you, if you come back from a Mormon mission and you go to door-to-door -door sales, yeah. that's easy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Selling whatever you're selling, whether it's no. pest control, alarms, solar, that's a lot easier than to try to convert somebody to another religion, yeah. right? Yep, hundred percent. And so, so, yeah, they get good, man. They learn how to believe in something and they learn how to to spread the word about it. So, yeah. you know, they're selling the priesthood, and dude, I've been so thankful for you know what I've been able to learn and from those guys, that group, and you know, it's really put me in a path where now I'm you know, able to teach what I've learned and make a living off of it. And I still sell here too, though, sure, which is sure, cool. So, sure. but it's just, I think that's been really fun because that works. It changes lives and uh, I can play a hand in that because unfortunately there's, you know, the only way to learn that stuff is to go work for a company like that. Yes. But, you know, not everybody has the luxury of doing it. So, yeah. you know, this way you can learn from someone like me who had, you know, their whole life experience and teaching that stuff. And so... I figured out what works well, what doesn't work. So yeah. that's been something I'm really proud to help people utilize. And so it's been cool. And as you say, not everybody has the luxury to have experienced that, but also not everybody has the grit to mm -hmm. go through it. Because yeah, no. that, that, that's a tough bracket. I remember when I was doing that, we used to door knock. We used to get in the office at 9 a.m. We used to do environment and practice pitching till about 11. At 11, mm -hmm. we used to go hit the field. We hit the field from 12 to 3. Took a 30 minute lunch break, 3.30 to 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We knocked and we carpooled. So it's like, you got, you got, then Saturdays we did the exact same thing, but yeah. instead of finishing at 8, we finished at 6. Yeah. I see now people that come into the industry that don't come from that and let's say they want a door knock, but they want to go door knock for two, three hours, yeah, bro. It's, I'm like, well, when everyone gets home from work, that's when I want to go right. to work. You're like, nah, dog. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's just that that's an excuse because they're afraid of getting rejected. So let me ask you this on that same subject. There's a lot of companies that that's a lot of guys in these companies. They don't even go five days a week, four days a yeah. week. They might go two, three or four. Right. <clears throat> and these are the, the more serious ones. Mm -hmm. How many hours for those people that want a door knock, whether they're doing solar, real estate alarms, whatever the case may be. Yeah. yeah. How many hours minimum should they be on the field? They want to make a full time income and yeah. be serious and become a professional. You got to, you got to put in at least forty hours, man. And that's the thing. Like I, you're going to be doing uh, six hours a day minimum until you get good on the field. On the field. Like right now, I could probably go out and talk to three or four people, close one down. But I spent my whole life doing it, and people yeah. want to get where I'm at without doing the sacrifice of right, that. So right. it's possible to go out at prime time and slam deals, but it's not scalable and it's not sustainable. Right. Unless you've done the work that, you know, I've been able to put in there and put all those hours and sacrifice, you know, and you know, not getting married, not having a family. Like I was working, like wow. I was knocking doors, right. Like, you know, family reunions, parties, sorry, I'm working. Yeah. So, you know, now that I'm a little older, I would have made some adjustments on that stuff, but understanding that you have to pay the cost to be the boss, and the, that cost is, is with just hours. You cannot be a boss without putting in the sacrifice yep. to get there. You get lucky a couple times, but unfortunately you have to you know, pay the piper. You pay the piper, the piper always pays. And by yes. paying the piper, it's putting in the hours till you get it. You have to put in 30, 40 hours a week 
in addition to buying leads and networking and marketing that way. So if you can't put in 40 hours, dude, then you're not going to get scalable, sustainable results. A hundred percent. I agree with you. And the thing about the 40 hours, for example, is 40 real hours, yeah. right? Most people, they if they put in eight hours of work in a day, they really did two hours of Tops. worth of work. Yeah, right? it's exactly. not a lot. And I tell people, don't confuse productivity with activity. Yeah, there's activity, then there's being productive. Yeah, and most people are not productive, right? Yeah. They're not like I tell my guys, how many hours are you dedicating to your solar business? I'm going eight hours. I said six of those hours, yeah. especially because it's not like you're overwhelmed with leads and yeah, follow-ups yeah, yeah, and appointments. Yeah. Yeah, no you got to be six hours at least on the field, yeah. belly to belly, kneecap to kneecap, talking to people, pitching. We call it, I come from the MLM world. Mm -hmm. We call it showing the plan. Yeah, yeah. Showing the plan basically means presenting, yeah, yeah. right? So even if you're prospecting, that's a mini presentation. Yeah, yeah, it's 100%. how I view it and how yeah. I teach it, right? And then the mini present, enough mini presentations leads to a full presentation. Yep. And so, but you got to be showing the plan. And most people, they're just not, they're just not doing that. Yeah, no. And, and you know, one thing too, it's crazy is like the people that have money are usually working during the day. So what I would do is, is I'd find these small mom and pop shop businesses in the areas that I was working. I'd go and pop in on them. And you, they can't go anywhere. So you can <laughs> right. go in there and sell them. Like, you know, if you want to find out, like doing business to business, there was a great way to do that. I remember setting a church up that way. Like one of my biggest accounts I ever sold was uh, this guy that ran a church. And I was just walking around. I saw him. Uh, the church had like a small little like office building on the side. I just walked in and I was like, hey, man, I know you guys got this company. Uh it looks like it's old. Who do I talk to? He's like, talk to the pastor. So I talked to the pastor. Pastor was t totally cool and That's set cool. him up. So it's like, you know, if you want it, you'll do it. It's just people are so afraid of rejection. Yep. That's why they don't put in the t hours because you do get busy doing nonsense work. Yes. It's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm organizing my files. Like, oh, I'm, I'm contacting people about leads. None of that stuff pays the bills. You have to be in contact with clients, yes. getting them that has an electric bill and getting them to switch over. Hey guys, if you like this short clip, make sure you check out another short clip right here. And if you want to catch a full episode, click on this one. And I'll see you guys at the top or from the top.